Hey, what's up you guys? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to do some basic SQL injection techniques. Um, in order to demonstrate these, we're going to go ahead and use DBWA, which is Damn Vulnerable Web App. Uh, and I'm currently hosting this on one of my other systems. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and log in. Okay, and what this is is basically a uh, PHP server with a backend MySQL database that's susceptible to different types of web app vulnerabilities. So we're going to start by setting our security to low so that it is susceptible to the SQL injection techniques. Then we're going to select SQL injection. And what we have is a very basic web app here that... Uh, once again, uses PHP for server-side scripting and MySQL as a backend server database. And all it does is have you enter a user ID and whenever you click submit, it will return a first name and last name if the user ID is located in the database. Uh, so we've got a, it's basically just a user IDs of one through five. Uh, so you enter the ID and it's gonna give you first name and last name. All right, so what we want to do is uh, first we're going to go ahead and look at the source code. And as we can see, what it's doing is it's basically using this, it's getting the ID entered by the person using the web app and then it bounces that ID off of the backend MySQL database by using this SQL query and then using the string entered by the person using the web app. So select first name and last name from users which is the name of the table where user ID is equal to and then whatever they provide. So basically what we want to do is we want to modify the end of this query in such a way that it will actually provide more information to us than what the web app was intended to provide. So in order to do this, I went ahead and duplicated the backend database with my own MySQL database. Uh, Um, and MySQL is actually already built into Backtrack. You just have to start the service. So that's going to be a, a service MySQL start. And then MySQL dash U for user, then root, then dash P to have it prompt us for a password, and then users is going to be the name of the database that I'm trying to connect to. And it's going to prompt me for the password. Okay, and now that we're into that, I'll go ahead and show you the database that I created, which is basically to duplicate or mimic the backend database of our web app. It's going to be, uh, Okay, so that's just select all from, and uh, asterisk is basically just a wild card, so it selects everything from users. And as you can see, we've got our five different user IDs and then the first name and last name. So then what we want to do is we'll go ahead and paste the query that is being sent to the backend database. And basically the way that it's functioning right now in the database is person's going to enter any number and then the script actually closes it out to where ah. okay I see the problem here uh, well this isn't gonna work but okay so let's try that again let's paste and 
what we want to do is not send it back as a string because we're not actually sending it back we're already in the database okay so then what it's doing right now is user inputs number and then it returns with that given user IDs information and then sends it back up to the front end what we want to do is modify that SQL query in such a way that it is unconditionally true uh, that being the case any row that it runs the query against the statement is going to be true thus it's going to return that information for every single row uh, this is called a tautology or a tautological injection so an example of this would be uh, select first name and last name from users where user ID is equal to one or X is equal to X now as you can see this actually unloads the entire table the reason being the statement x equals x is always unconditionally true and if you're familiar with computer logic the or operator basically whenever it tests out two different statements if either one is true it returns the entire statement as true so because the statement is unconditionally true regardless of the condition tested or what row it's tested against it basically returns the entire table so we basically get that same result if we inject that into the web app so to try that real quick, I'll go ahead and do user ID is equal to 2 or x is equal to x. And we're actually not going to close out the string on x or put the semicolon because that's actually already done in the script. So we go ahead and run that. And once again, we get the entire table dropped. Now, unfortunately, with SQL injection, it's never going to be one specific exact command that you're going to have to enter. You're going to have to be familiar with structured query language and kind of have an idea of what's going back into the back end, which is why error messages always are helpful. Uh, and it's also going to vary depending on what kind of back end database they're using. But uh, But this is always one that's good thing to try is tautological statements um, another one we can do would be like uh, user ID is equal to X or and then we do an integer is equal to the same integer and then we'd close it out with a semicolon and then comment out the rest of what's inserted. The reason being we don't want to close out a string because we didn't actually open a string because we're testing an int as opposed to a string. So uh, the pound sign will actually comment out the end of the statement in the text that's being sent to the back end to include the semicolon that follows it and the uh, single quotation. So then we get the same result from that. So those are some basic uh, SQL injection techniques, and uh, the more you become familiar with SQL language, the more you're going to be effective in working this. Uh, I highly recommend um, a site called SQL Course if you're just getting started. And basically this is just a uh, series of lessons that will step-by-step -step teach you uh, the basics of using structured query language. So if you are just getting started and need to get familiar with SQL language, then I recommend using that. And that'll give you a better idea of what you're trying to send to the back end in order to get the results that you need. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today. You guys have a great day and I'll see you next time.